Welcome to Biomutant. Now, to Bio we have been playing this game for, oh, we got it last week, so you know we've been able to play it six or seven days before it came out. A lot of hype for this game. A lot um, of hype for this I'm game. I'm really surprised how many people are actually talking about this on social media. I personally think it's because there's a three or four week window between the next big game. So people just want to be excited for something. So it's Biomutant. We've been playing it now and we have some thoughts. They're not good thoughts. We're going to start They're really there. not good thoughts. Well, let's start with the drop and then let's get into it. All right. Okay, so general thoughts. Okay. Um, Biomutant <laughs> is... I thought it was going to be really cool. Okay, so the funny thing about Biomutant is that it's a game that previews exceptionally well. I remember when we were going to get the code mm. and everyone had been talking about it and I sort of jumped online and, and I looked at the, the trailers. I'm like, this game actually looks really cool. The combat looks fun. The world looks pretty, you know, and it's an RPG. Like, mm. I, I was... I was actually really excited. We were in the office talking about it. Man, this game is really bad. Sadly it is, and I really want to start this review by saying that this is a first attempt by a couple of, you know, obviously really passionate and excited devs that have left the um, Avalanche Studios and started their own thing and they announced this in like 2015 or so and of course it's taken about five years to fully bring this to life. The team of about 25. Yeah. Uh, I don't think at any point do I think this is, you know, it doesn't have predatory monetization mechanics. It doesn't have garbage XP boosters. Like, there's nothing like that. You know, I, I don't have a problem with this game for anything that's malicious. I have a problem with this game because it fundamentally feels like it's undercooked in pretty much every single capacity. And that's what, look, you know, before we get into the details, one thing I will say is this feels like it's tried to do so much in so many aspects and cover so much ground in what could be cool in gaming that it doesn't actually execute or specialize in anything. Mm. There is no, when I finished the game, because I think we both finished the game in, in, in its entirety, in the main quest. When I finished it, I could not sit back and think, what were they exceptional at? What was the one thing I could think of that they really executed like, in a really fantastic way? There was not a single one, sadly. The title screen. Oh, you like the title screen? That's probably it. <laughs> no, look, maybe I'm being too harsh. Look, before we really get into the nuts and bolts of it all, the thing that's really sad about this game is that you can tell how much love has been poured into mm. this project. Yeah. Every single aspect of the game, you can just feel like the developers have been working on this for such a long time. Yeah. The world really is beautiful. You can tell they've tried to, to inject a lot of charm into its characters. They've been quite ambitious with the loot game and the, the RPG elements and how you, you, you level up. You know, you can tell they've really tried to flesh this thing out. What remains is just this incredibly half-baked set of derivative ideas they borrow the the ideas from other games in such an unabashed kind of way where like again we'll talk about it but like the main quest structure is identical to breath of the wilds mm. like without spoiling things it's basically just the divine beast quest four things in the top corners you got to go there and then you come back to the middle yeah it's so derivative in many of its measurable components that you don't actually feel as though they've iterated on anything. Mm. And, but more than that, they haven't actually even executed their copied ideas very well. And yeah. so it just doesn't feel very good to play. I think we'll come back to a whole, like a few mm. more general ideas later, but I think the first thing that you will experience a lot in this game um, is the ever omnipresent presence of the narrator. Now, this narrator, man. I think on paper, it sounds like a really cool idea. And I think that the actual voice actor did an exceptional job. Mm. Just to paint the picture, everywhere you go in this world, you're going to hear a narrator come out of nowhere and just spout nonsense mm. about nothing. Yeah. Or every time you interact with any animal on this world that you know you can talk to he's gonna talk for you you know he they're, they're gonna spout gibberish and he's actually gonna narrate what they're saying it's cool for like maybe the first half an hour after playing the game for 10 hours 12 hours or whatever you're gonna play it or even longer mm. you are going to get sick to death of this narrator mm. and before we even get more into it in the settings they allow you to turn the narrator like pretty much all the way down yeah and the moment you're allowing your audience to turn off the narrator in the settings, mm -hmm. you must know 
as a developer that you have an, uh, you have an inherent problem there because you know also he's kind of annoying. Yeah, it's it's a weird design choice and Big time. Um, the narrative delivery is incredibly frustrating. The, the the team decided to deliver all the dialogue in the game via this in-game narrator with kind of banjo kazooie gibberish in the background from the characters that you're talking to. And and the performance is really good. It's kind of reminiscent of a very Stephen Fry style like British dude, you know. Mm, it, and it's really it is quite charming. Regardless of how good this performance is, the frequency of this commentary throughout your exploration of the world, so while you're doing, you know, mundane activities, you know, while you're solving puzzles or exploring, he'll just make these comments that are so often repeated mm. that you just get sick of them. The other strange thing with this this, this design choice of the narrator is that You've got this world with all these different character designs and even like the gibberish, while it's annoying, it mm. sounds unique. You, you feel like there was so much prospect for the for, for the world to feel very unique and fleshed out and, and kind of quirky. The, the, the problem with delivering all the dialogue through this singular narrator is that everything feels so utterly homogenized. Mm. Every single encounter with any quest giving character, with any NPC, just feels like the same conversation because there's no variance in the writing style and the voice is always the same. I agree, they're so colorful. I mean, that's one thing that I will say about a lot of these characters. A lot of them look like giant pinatas, like so colorful, so amazing in their design and so... Think like bottles from, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, yep. the big beaver with the goggles. They, 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 they Those kinda, kinds yeah. of things, but you're right. Every single time that any character, regardless of what they looked like, would open their mouth and speak the gibberish, it was always through the same lens and that didn't allow you to feel mm. the diversity you would might want to feel in those kind of giant games kind of thing. Look, not only is the, 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 the choice to use this narrator questionable mm. but the actual narrative that is delivered through his voice the story the mean? story itself yeah. is meaningless like it, it it's it doesn't mean anything like i was confused by the end of it as to what my okay you understand what the main objective is yeah but i was confused as to at what point was i going to start caring um yeah it's just yeah like it felt like at no point did they deliver a story that was really connecting with me that made me feel like, okay, this is why I'm on this journey and this is why I really care. They tried to stuff some like family tragedy stuff in it, like some, you know. The boy who lived, Harry Potter style. That kind of thing. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I, I when I stepped back and finished it, I just felt like this is just like the normal traps of trying to make something a bit more emotional. But, uh, you know, underneath it all, it, it really didn't deliver in terms of story either. You're right in saying it's very Breath of the Wild in terms of the, you know, the Divine Beast. The only difference is you can't just pick anyone you want mm. to go to. You've actually got a bit of a curated kind of, you know, sequence. It's a bit more linear, yeah. A bit more linear. But the, the, yeah, the whole premise is that there's the tree of life in the middle of the world and you've got to save it again, which is very Ori, and Ori you mm. know? Um, Another thing was that when, when the, the first area in the game is called Bunker 101. In Fallout 3, you start at Vault 101. Like, there's all these re these, these really blatant narrative des design choices that are just like, we need to copy someone else's idea because we can't think of anything on our own mm. and we're also not going to do it that well. But in terms of the actual world, the world that you will be exploring, one thing, uh, you know, definitely when you start, you think, wow, this is such a colorful, vibrant, and brilliant looking world. Mm. Such high in contrast, like, you think this is going to be a really cool and you know dramatically different experience every corner of the globe I go to. The sad reality is it's quite similar in all aspects. You think that you are gonna have- You mean a, the world environment? The world environment. You think that you're gonna go and have a very Breath of the Wild thing where like, you know, the Gorons and the Zora, you know, like there's such a different melting pot of worlds mm. that you that you are that you're able to travel through and feel like you're literally going to corners of an entire planet where this really feels like it's a bit of a letdown because it just feels like you're only visiting the same type of land that has slight changes most of the time it's going to be very green in nature apart from the dead zone and there's maybe a bit of like you know radioactive areas yeah but like even then like you don't even have to visit them 90 percent of the time especially through the in the entirety of the main questing apart from the dead zone and there's like little moments here and there it is just mostly greenery it's mostly greenery and i think that if you're going to try and make an open world with this kind of highly contrasted uh you know 
cartoonish looking world, you have a lot of scope to do some really awesome things. And that's another space I think that they really didn't fully deliver. Yeah, look, the world's really pretty. Uh, there's no doubting it. They certainly overutilize like this is the look of one biome that's really in the middle. Mm. Uh, there's like a, a kind of more mountainous area in one area. There's a more foresty area in another. <laughs> But overall, it ends up really feeling the same. There's also a severe lack of verticality in the environments. So everything just feels really flat. There's obviously some slight hills, but for the most part, you feel like you're just traversing really flat. Um, <clears throat> the other really big problem that I found, I'm not sure if you found it, was just a lot of the world geometry didn't work when you were exploring it. There were hills that you just couldn't walk up. You have to go all the way around. When you, like, you look, like I've been playing games for a long time. I look at a hill and I'm like, that's a hill I can walk yeah. up. No. I can scar him that. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. You just end up going up and you don't like, you just sort of get trapped in this walking animation. Mm. And it's it's so incredibly frustrating. The world geometry also really fails in the water. Um, like trying to get up on ledges out big of the time, water. Big time. Especially it, if you're mounted, you're like, oh, I've got to get off this mound. It, it just felt like it was it, undercooked. Yeah. It, yeah. It's like, it's you, you, the game really needed a ledge grab. Mm. And you don't have a ledge grab unless it's scripted. Um, and it just it just made walking around a pain in the ass, man. Yeah, big time. And the last thing I'm saying on uh, Open World before we move on is, you know, there is this kind of elemental aspect to this where it's like four different types of resistances that you want to be having mm. to allow to uh, allow you to kind of explore certain parts of the world. Apart from the dead zone, where you have to have a certain kind of mech on to be able to traverse that area, at no point through the main quest did you feel like you needed to actually invest any time in upgrading your resistances or getting resistant gear to go to these small pockets of the world that were like resistant gated, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, it'd be like a cold zone and you need, like if you spend too long in there, you'll die. So you kind of need to up your, you up, up your resistances to cold. And yeah, it's just, you have no reason to visit them. Breath of the Wild did it perfectly where you, you know, the main quest demanded you to go and find particular items that allowed you to go into those areas, which made it in turn exciting. Because you were like, I did all this work, now I get to explore this area because it's part of the main journey, or it's just part of that big journey that I really want to go into those areas and start doing those objectives. Um, those, those spaces seemed like a waste of time by the end of it, because I fundamentally, as we said on the phone, I'm not sure why they did it. They they put in areas and then they didn't utilize them in the main questing. Now I did some side questing through this too, but we won't get too much into that today. It's really gonna be about the main quest and the actual story itself. So in regards to those particular pockets that had those resistance, it just kind of felt like a waste of time. Like it was not necessary in this world. And if they implemented it correctly and made you go into it and made you work for that gear that paid off in the main quest, I think that would have been a lot better. Yeah, look, there, there's these there's these areas in the world that you kind of you can explore as a side quest option. Um, I didn't like do the sewers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I okay. I really wanted to do some of the side questing so I could see what this game had to offer, but I kind of just refused to because it really had the game has no respect for your time that you invest in this game. It refuses to reward you in any meaningful ways for any questing that you do. The, the quests in this game are the most frustrating, almost disrespectful in how it treats the player's time. Mm. The, 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 the fetch quest nature of this is so, it, I could not, but do you remember the last quest? with um, so get the, grease. the final world eater. Yeah. So that, well, there's these world eaters, they're basically the divine beasts. There was this one quest where you went to go kill this world eater. You go to the guy, he's got a mech for you to use. He's like, damn, I'm out of grease. Can you go give me some grease? And okay, you go, all right. So you walk out, you go to this annoying dude and you're like, can I have some grease? He's got the grease on the wall in a glass cabinet. He's like, before we need, before I can give you the grease, I really need a wing nut. Like, okay, so I go and get this wing nut that's halfway across the map. I come back to him. He's like, thanks. You just end up breaking the glass case anyway. You go back. Now the guy needs ammunition. Mm. You go out, you go get some fireworks. You come back. He said, damn, now we need a special type of ammunition that end up just being these fish. Mm. So you then go out and get these fish. This one quest requires four fetch quests 
that are so boring that 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 ultimately by the end I was just skipping all the dialogue on top far- of the narrative uh, the, the narrator being annoying yeah also. fast traveling <laughs> as fast as I could to all these different points <laughs> racing to the finish because I just wanted to be able to say I finished this so I could uninstall it which is what I did unfortunately yeah. I don't want to feel too I don't want to yeah. be too mean but as soon as I finished this game I pressed options and I uninstalled. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I, I think, I, look, I completely agree. The questing was was painful because it uh, it felt very hollow and I just wasn't motivated to do it. Of course, we had to do it to finish it. But one thing I think also is like the major thing you'll be doing apart from exploring this world and questing is combat. Mm. Okay, that's, that's a big problem. Uh, yeah. I will start by saying that this feels like a PlayStation 2 game that wanted to bring a movie to video games so you could play as the latest Pixar character. Like, do you know what I mean by that? Well, the I melee, mean, yeah, I do. Like, the melee... If we were to start with the melee first, the melee feels so unbelievably undercooked, unsatisfying, and so much uh, emphasis on animation and not any real emphasis on making this feel good. Yeah. You know, it, Did you find that the combat looked really good in previous? Mm. It's all about the animations, man. Like, we've seen other developers do this. I can't remember games off the top of my head, but that's something that happens sometimes. Some developers make it look so flashy and beautiful that they don't actually think that we need to make this feel like you're really connecting. Like, we need to make sure that it really feels like it's, oh, wow, that's really gritty and solid combat. And this kind of falls into that category where it just felt like every time I was in a, in, in a, in a room with a bunch of enemies, I just felt like I was like floating mm. when I'm trying to do these animations and it just, nothing was like solidly co- connecting to make it feel like it was a really worthwhile fighting experience. Yeah. Like, and that's just merely, we'll get to ranged after. I, I couldn't believe the disconnect between how good this game looked and then how it felt when you put your hands on the controller. Mm. As like as I said, when we're in the office here and we saw the videos, and I saw the combat, I'm like, this looks awesome. This does look a bit Arkham, as the game's art director made a comparison to in, in his in his um, explanation video mm. that was released last week. This does look a bit like that. And then you touch it, man, and then you put your hands on the controller, and it is the most floaty, mm. disconnected, melee combat I've felt in, in a really long time. It does honestly feel like... Like Jack and Dax, oh, I don't know. Even no, like, Jack and Dax yeah, feels better. Even that's better. Like I'm talking like PS2 era, where like just things were just combat in those cartoony lights adventure things. It wasn't the emphasis, you know. And yeah, it just feels like it just feels it feels like it's three console generations ago. This type of combat, you know. And when I did play it and actually start melee, I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm gonna do ranged which brings me to ranged combat. Now, when you're doing ranged combat, it's kind of saved a little bit by how heavy the animation emphasis is because you're jumping around, there's a lot of slow-mo moments, and it kind of feels really cool, almost like beautiful Joe Max yeah, Payne. Yeah, matrixy kind yeah. of. Yeah, and that kind of enriches the combat a little bit, but you are left feeling like you have a almost like a sidearm, like something that feels like it's a secondary weapon and it doesn't pack a punch. It doesn't give you that real, I'm able to just completely destroy a room of mm. eight or nine enemies because they feel extremely bullet spongy and they feel like these weapons just, you know, they're, they're, they're not giving me the power fantasy that I yeah. would want in this type of game. Yeah, there's no real oomph behind them. Mm. Um, the range was the only one that was really, I think was probably the most viable because yeah. it was the only one that was tolerable. Uh, Millie was awful. The, the 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 ability powers that you get are just you make you leave, they leave you feeling impotent. Like mm. they're just not good. Uh, range it, is the only thing that kind of sounded relatively good. Like a lot of them, like what when you did you find that when you're doing the melee attacks, like you just you didn't sound like you were hitting anything. It felt like I was hitting bamboo against like a little uh, uh, like a like a, a plastic PVC pipe. <laughs> it was it was like yeah. You know, the, like, when you're doing the melee, it's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you've got the gun, you basically need to turn the volume down 10 it's notches. It's so obnoxious. It's so loud. Yeah. It's got this really weird a- a- mix. And and then the last point I'll make is this game really needed a lock-on. Did you find that? Sometimes it was actually relatively fine. Oh, um, I hated it. I, I didn't actually have too much of an issue It needed a lock-on so badly. But look, I would say that, you know, if I was to... If this game was to be done again, I would say absolutely make this an over-the-shoulder third-person 
shooter, get rid of the melee, and really just work on that ranged combat, because that was the glimmer of hope within the combat mm. aspect of it. But, you know, we can't escape the fact that it just felt extremely muted. You're in a room with eight or nine different enemies, you're trying to shoot them all, and it just doesn't feel like you should. You have the power that you should. On top of a obnoxious soundscape when you're actually trying to shoot, it just felt like it was not enjoyable in any aspect of combat, if I'm being honest here. Yeah. But one thing I really want to cover before we finish here and get and get to our general thoughts is, man, the you know the the RPG elements of this and the gear. Now I've literally written down here, like I'm gonna have to read some of this just to give you a snapshot. When you enter this world, there is multiple scrap items slash ability power up shrines that you need to find around the world. A customizable system for a gun and armor builder with a full set of gear to equip, with add-ons for each piece of armor, and color rarity systems also built into this, with three or four different ability slash magic up power up menus, with an additional physical and range move learning system, needing at least three or four different level up currencies. Now. It just feels so unbelievably overwhelming when you're trying to jump in here. And every time that you're leveling up, there's so much to do and look at that you're just, it, it, it's, it, it's just too much. It's convoluted. It's, it's just too much. There is at least three or four different currencies needed, as I said, to actually level up. And on top of that, there's just such an array of different customization yeah. and learning combat rain, a melee combat and range combat systems that you can also learn. And like, it, it's just one of the most busiest and unnecessary combat and level up systems I've ever seen when it really just should have been a skill tree and an entire armor that you put on. Not each individual piece that has individual add-ons, mm. just one bit of armor that you put on, and then maybe you can power that up. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the game, yeah, it's an interesting point. The game feeds you tutorials for about five or six hours. Oh my God. The game is constantly feeding you tutorials, introducing new systems that don't actually change the gameplay in any meaningful ways. Mm. Um, yes, you're right. There's like, there's the body armor, there's one of each shoulders. You've got your on, like your, your main hand, your off hand. Each of those hands can have different weapons. There's a, cra a weapon crafting system in the game that that I think is one of the more interesting elements of the game. But like it, it ends up like there's no point crafting all these really cool weapons when the combat that you're going to use them in sucks. Like I just had no incentive. I just crafted one really strong weapon. See you later. I want to get to the credits. And what's interesting is like look if you look at Diablo for instance, like of course there's like twelve different pieces of you know amulets and rings like. For some reason, that works in Diablo. Well, it's because it's a rewarding this, loot game. Sure, but like in terms of even just the presentation of it all and the uh, your ability to digest how that all works in Diablo, it's just seemingly easier. Like it's just it was just so ridiculously mm. overwhelming. And every time I leveled up and realized I had a few points in each currency and I had a level, I had to level up, and I was annoyed because I'd be like, oh, I got to spend now forty seconds or like sometimes two minutes to like look at each particular window of like where where am i going to spend that particular currency where should i spend that particular currency you know and the, the the basic problem i had is because you couldn't make a mental map of your next three or four levels because it was just all so much that you're left not feeling excited about your progression mm. because it's hard to make that mental map that makes you excited about the next hour or two of your playtime. Great point. I remember when I'd get the level up indicator, I would groan. Yes, yes, me I'd too. I'd be like, oh, I have to go through these <laughs> shit menus <laughs> yeah, yeah. and allocate these meaningless different kinds of points. Yeah. You've got three sets of ability points. Like, just give me one. Mm. But you need to go through all these different menus and allocate the ability points for this one to a stat that doesn't matter. You've got to allocate these ability points to these, set, these sets of powers that don't mean anything and that don't make you more powerful. By the end, I was frustrated when I was leveling up. Oh, I was this is an RPG, man. This yeah. is an RPG. This is supposed to be level up. You're basically, remember in Skyrim, the who, who, rah, and yeah, you're like, yeah. fuck yeah, I'm going to the stars, I'm putting points and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I think visually, Skyrim's a perfect example where a lot of it was visually right in front of you, where with this one was like so many different, uh, you know, menu drop downs and like, there's just so much going on, you know. Unfortunately. And one thing I will say is, yeah, sometimes it felt like some of the abilities were good. I think it was 20% faster uh, reload for your ammo or 15% 
uh, extra range damage for non-automatic um, weapons. Like that's kind of cool. Again, you can't really get excited for this when you can't really mentally plan out what you want to do with it. But I guess this all brings us to maybe just the general thoughts now, because yes, we've had a big session today. Yeah, it has. Look, look, we've... there's a lot of things we may have not covered, but we want to just feel we, we want to tell you what the major things which we had a problem with. Again, we didn't want to come here and trash this game, but you know we kind of got to tell you that. There's a lot of hype around this game and like... It's strange, man. It's 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 not deserving, but, you know? And I just want to say quickly that like, again, these are first time devs and they're obviously passionate about this game. They wanted to put out a, a good product. You can tell that they put a lot of effort in, but that effort didn't, you know, culminate into a fantastic product. You mean a first time team? A first team? Sorry, first yeah. time team. They're, they're, yeah. Um, look, I think the big problem with this game fundamentally is that uh, an adventure RPG is really built on 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 sort of three pillars. You've got your narrative, you've got the the world and quest design, and then you've got the RPG systems. Mm. None of those pillars can hold this game up. They each of their respective components are so half baked, uh, so derivative, so uninspired, and ultimately poorly executed that what remains is this it's really a mess it's it's a mess it is a mess and and, I, and it's sad because this game previews so incredibly well i know i've said it before but when you are looking at this game without your hands on the controller it looks great i it it, it looks beautiful you know uh, the, the the world vistas are stunning. When you go into environments, they're really bland, mm. like indoor environment, terrible. Or the fortresses that yeah. you're overtaking. Really stuff. bad. All those yep. outposts. We we haven't even touched on the outposts. Oh, we haven't got time. But <laughs> yeah, but there's another bad main quest system about which these kind outposts. of abruptly ends. Yeah. But anyway, it's really interestingly, very quickly, <laughs> it's like it gives you these all these territories around the world that you need to conquer, mm. and then so you go and conquer them. Once you've done half of them, it gives you like this ultimatum where it's like, you just we can unite everyone if you want. It's almost like the developers are, were aware that this quest sucks and they've put it in the game to pad it out, but they're going to give you an option to say, I don't want to do the rest of it's it. Like Let's playing, just make a truce. It's like playing Diablo and then like getting halfway to hell and then they say, do you just want to go straight to Diablo now and not do half of this game? No, no, like, it's like right. saying Diablo wants to be your friend now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you accept? Do you accept? <laughs> do you accept? <laughs> <laughs> you leave the game. Yeah, it's fine. It it's honestly fun. feels like that. But look, I mean, look, general, look, I think that this game is going to be probably reviewed pretty badly. I give this, in terms of ice cream scoops, I give it a one out of three. Oh, man, yeah. I think it's a one out of three because yeah. I feel, look, it's not a half of a scoop. Yeah. Maybe it's a kid size, you know, it's a, it's a kid size out of three because it just, it doesn't deliver in anything that I want I would have wanted. It doesn't know who this audience is for also. That's another point that we didn't fully touch on, but these huge, you know, complex mechanics within this colorful and childlike world in a way, feels like, am I playing this? Is this for kids? Is this for adults? Is this for both? Like, it's just, it's, it's muddled, it's confused. Um, at no point does it deliver. And, you know, the biggest problem I had is, you know, it just tried to spread itself out too much and didn't execute and, and specialize on anything. Mm, yeah. Unfortunately, for, for all of Biomutant's surface level charm and, and impressive preview impressions, the game struggles to find its focus and, and just ends up presenting a litany of half-baked ideas devoid of any originality or innovation in the RPG genre and didn't really incentivize me to explore its world. I mean, as mm -hmm. an RPG, you're, you're, the, whole, the whole idea is to go out there, explore, find quests, get rewards that mean something, go out there and do it again. Uh, it, it didn't incentivize me to do that to the point where I literally didn't do a side quest. Like, <laughs> I did every side quest in Fallout 3. I did every side quest in Mass Effect in the Mass Effect series. Like I love side quests in RPGs. I didn't do one in this game. I did look I did I did some stuff in terms of like having to move huge satellites to find certain positions and go explore that, go find certain particular seeds that you're supposed to replant in the world tree. I went and uh, you know did uh, finding a mount 
going into sewers and exploring those. I did them, and at no point did I feel like they were actually paying off. So you didn't miss out on yeah, anything. Yeah, it doesn't reward you, man. But anyway, guys, look, I will say that this is this is a miss, man. Don't buy this right now. Never buy this, actually. Like I, like I, I, I feel bad, but like it's the truth, you know. Like you guys, you guys got to hear it. I don't think this is a game that you should buy. It's not predatory in nature. It's just undercooked and very underwhelming. But guys, we it's a definite will... one ice cream scoop. It's a one ice cream scoop for you too. Yep. Yeah. All Brains right, guys. and dick. <laughs> well, guys, we'll see you guys next time for our next review. Uh, maybe Clank. I guess that maybe is our next review. Who knows? Um, we'll see how we go. All right, guys. Let it out.